Uh, Ed here is quite a fast cyclist, but an area that he's not particularly quick is on the descents, and that is in no small part because, well, just look at him. <laughs> he's quite weedy, mm, quite well, light. Well, you're an engineer, so can you do the maths to, to work out how I can go faster? Yeah, we could uh, go maybe aero kit. No, yeah. no I, I reckon I've got a better idea. We're going to make you heavier. Ah, don't need to eat. <laughs> no. Here you go. What do I do with this? <laughs> We're going to strap that to you and see if it makes you any quicker down the hills. I, yeah, just like that. That's just what I was thinking. <laughs> right, here you go. Oh, at least it's not the gaffer tape. My body needs a bit of wall. Oh, wax! <laughs> I was thinking about that one on the way up. <laughs> wow. You're making it look easy, mate. <laughs> There we go, looking good. Delightful. Now for granted, this isn't the most scientific experiment and has come about mainly because I want to see him struggle up a hill with eight kilos strapped to him. And I've seen him how much he struggles with eight kilos of water back from the supermarket. However, we should be able to get some useful findings from this. We've set him off on a steep hill, but we'll also be doing a shallow gradient to see, well, just how much different that eight kilos makes. So I've got this extra eight kilograms that straps my chest. I tell you what, it certainly doesn't make climbing any easier. I'm currently going pretty darn hard and then eight K an hour. That's five mile an hour for you old schoolers. You enjoying yourself? <laughs> So Ed's currently trundling up the hill. He's going to do runs with the water and then runs without and see if he's quicker or if he makes it further. My starting position is marked for the multiple attempt. I've hidden my bag so nobody can seal my water bottle. So to try and make this as reliable as possible, we've strapped the water to Ed's front. That means that it's going to have a smaller aerodynamic effect than if it was on his back because that's not what we're trying to find really, is it? Um, and we've also told him very strictly that he's got to keep the same position on the bike. Now that is easier said than done, but if we do enough runs, then, well, he's gonna be a very tired boy, but we should be able to get some reliable results. Well, we're back in the studio now and Ed's times and distances have been studied and analyzed. So I guess you wanna know some results. So we'll start on the timed runs down the steeper of the two descents. According to Strava, this had an average gradient of minus 10% and lasted in the region of 40 seconds. Just as a recap, Ed didn't pedal at any point during the descent, got a TT style start to avoid having to push off the line and took the same line through the one corner each time. He also tried as hard as possible to maintain the same position throughout the testing and we did it on the stillest day possible to try and avoid any wind gusts that could throw the results. Ed did a total of eight runs, each three quarters of a kilometer, four with the eight kilos of water and four without. And overall, he was quicker, drum roll please, with the additional weight, but not by as much as you might think. The additional eight kilos made Ed on average 1.5 seconds faster on our descent. That might not sound like a lot, but it is over 3% difference. It is worth noting, however, that the weight would have less an effect on a shallower descent especially if there was any corners and braking and acceleration required. The second test we did set Ed off down the same descent, but instead of stopping at the bottom, he carried on rolling up the other side of the dip until he ground to a halt. We then measured the distance he reached each time, again, four times with the eight kilos of additional weight and four without. Aha, just to let you all know, I stopped at that post last time. 
I know it's not a big difference, but it's a good three, four meters. To Ed's surprise, he performed better this time without the water strapped to him, stopping an average two meters further than when bottled up. So why is this? Well, there's two main forces acting on Ed and, it, and his bike as he cycles downhill. Any acceleration, because he's not pedaling, is due to gravity. And as you'll remember from back in school, F equals MA, where the force equals the mass times the acceleration. The acceleration is gravity. Therefore, when we make Ed heavier, the M in the equation gets bigger and hence, so does his overall force. However, the faster Ed travels, the more air resistance opposes his motion. This is why on the time descent, Ed was quicker as the air resistance stayed the same roughly whether he was wearing the weight or not. On his stomach, it didn't increase his drag by very much. However, when we then threw in the ascent on the other side, it's clear that the weight has more of a negative impact going up the hill than down it. Otherwise, he would have traveled further. Because air resistance has a non-linear relationship with speed, the additional weight has a far bigger impact when traveling at lower speeds, i.e. uphill. So in conclusion, does a heavier rider descend quicker? Well, yes, in a straight line at least anyway. However, as we previously discussed, your weight pales into insignificance when compared to aerodynamic drag. Therefore, if you want to get faster at descending, then our advice is not to hit the all-you-can-eat buffet, but rather work on your position and ditch the flappy clothing. If you want to see if I could use this advice to hit 100 kph on a bike, then check out our recent video using the link up there. Or if you want to watch me suffering on uphills instead, then use the end screen pop-up in just a second. As always, if you enjoyed this content, then remember to give us a like and subscribe to the channel and let us know any of your descending tips down in the comment section below. Let us know what garage science you'd like us to do next time and we'll see you then.